Hey everyone, welcome to Span News with Shed Show Talk. My name is Beth, and this is your news source for things going on in the world that is supernatural, paranormal, things involving aliens or something anomalous. We always take reports from people like you. Thank you for supporting our channel and thank you for subscribing, commenting, and sharing our videos. It means a lot to myself, Beth, and to Paul. Okay, first up we have a story coming out of Chile. And as you saw in the title, yes, a poltergeist attacks a home and whoever was in it was able to video record it. But this poltergeist also attacked the police. Now this event did occur about a month ago and there's still ongoing activity. And we're going to report about that ongoing activity and also look at the poltergeist caught on camera. And it's footage you need to see to believe. I would classify it under supernatural and paranormal. I'd also give you just a tad of a warning that uh, if you believe in the supernatural, this could be a scary video. Okay, I hope you guys are ready. This is gonna be crazy. Okay, so notice the light starts to swing. Oh my goodness. It's kind of going in a straight line, but sort of appears to have a bit of a spiral, like as if uh, maybe clockwise. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Whoa, what is happening? <laughs> Look at that. Oh, are you seeing all these bits and pieces moving around the house? This is crazy. <laughs> oh my goodness. At what point does the person like lose control of themselves in this environment? How's the guy standing still holding this video camera? Oh my goodness. So stuff's moving all over the place. Wow, did you see that cupboard? It opened just a little and then opened all the way. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. The bucket! Ah! <laughs> oh, did you see the bucket? Oh, that was crazy. Oh my goodness. We're going to have to watch this again and do some, some investigating. Oh, wow. Wow. So this is the house you just saw. And as you can probably tell, it's looking just absolutely um, like it's seen better days. <laughs> Honestly, I need a moment after watching that video. I don't know about you guys, but that bucket coming towards the guy with the camera gets me every time I watch it. Um, <laughs> that would be absolutely terrifying. I mean, who'd want to do dishes after that? But maybe that's just me. I don't know. Um, so you can imagine why they wanted to do a prayer service and why they wanted to try and, and exercise this, this poltergeist out. And Chile's seen a lot of supernatural phenomena in recent times, and this is just one example. Um, I find it kind of cool that the community is coming out together to try and support these homeowners. Um, but stay tuned to this story and we'll see how it continues to develop. I did find a really cool article about it. And what surprised me is what the police had actually mentioned had happened. And you guys, you guys got to hear this to believe this. So I'm just going to read this report right now. Okay, so when this family did call the police, one of the things they mentioned was they said it was a house fire. They didn't mention the fact that it was poltergeist activity because that kind of dark supernatural activity creates a lot of superstition and fear. And obviously so. I mean, if I had the mop bucket fly towards me, I think I'd be freaking out. And so they actually checked to see if the family was smoking anything, um, but the police themselves were absolutely stunned. And one official told a media outlet that when he first spotted a spatula moving on its own, he thought it was simply an introduction or a prelude to something really unsettling. And he claims that he cried out the name of the devil. And as he was leaving the house, he was suddenly struck in the back by a knife that seemingly came out of nowhere. And fortunately, he had his bulletproof vest on, which saved him from being stabbed by this knife. Um, he was incredibly shaken and he said it was like something out of a movie and they didn't know what to believe. It was simply incredible. The family themselves were taken out and escorted out of the home by the authorities and taken somewhere else to stay. And no one particularly knows what supernatural presence was there. Uh, but clearly this poltergeist tale has brought the police, it's brought the local authorities, and it's also brought the spiritual groups together 
as they try to investigate what would cause things to move. And keep in mind what we saw in that video, the clock was moving in sort of a spiral motion. And when I investigate things, I like to find the direction of motion because that can give us some evidence for things that we'll look at maybe in another video. But holy cow, um, I don't know about you guys, but do you want to watch it one more time? I do. Okay, I'm going to replay it for you. Okay, the light is swinging. This time I turned off the music just to see what we see. But let's, there's the light swinging and it seems to accelerate and decelerate. Whoa, like a massive swing just happened there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and there goes something against the wall. So it was this, as if a force came from the direction of the camera and moved the light and then moved something against the wall. Now there's pots going horizontally, so it's moving and switching directions. This is absolutely crazy. And yes, it's much more scary to me with the sound off. So things are moving around as if in a sequence. Oh my goodness. And there goes the cupboard. It starts to open and then slams open. Okay, who would be standing there shooting this? Talk about having courage. Well done. Remember to shoot, share, and tell us at Shed Show Talk. What you find, there's the bucket. Oh gosh, that stupid bucket gets me every time. You know, I've done an exceptional amount of field investigation for supernatural, paranormal, and other events. And I have to tell you, I've never lost that jumpiness. Want to watch it one more time with me? Let's just, uh, let's just watch this one more time and see if we pick up anything else. Because I've seen a lot of different footage, but this one is exceptional. Oh my goodness, there goes the light. Notice it starts to slow down. Person gets comfortable with the camera, and I don't know how they did that. Well done. Uh, <laughs> there goes the stick. Oh, nope, there goes the light first. It had another big swing, then the stick. It's almost as if there's something happening like um, an energy field uh, that's partially magnetic that pulls and pushes, but it has a directional movement. Oh, this is something I'd like to discuss with one of our Shed Show talkers, Roger. Roger, I'm going to ask you about this video. I think that was the bread, uh, the bread cupboard, and then of course the cabinet cupboard. Oh my goodness. But same thing, it's happening in appearingly a clockwise fashion and the guy doesn't see the bucket coming the bucket looked as if it was picked up on an angle and then pushed completely horizontally i will absolutely be talking to our shed show talkers about this so far we have two official shed show talkers we've got roger and deborah so thank you to them we also have some avid subscribers and people who contribute to our ongoing conversation so thank you to anyone who wants to be a shit show talker. We've started a Patreon page to kind of support us along. So check that out if you want to become a shit show talker now. But you guys, this is this footage is so incredible. First off, think of how many ghost stories you've ever told. And now you're seeing a video of it. This has had an impact on the local police, the local authorities, the local media, the local churches. Everybody has a vested interest in this story in Chile, and it has not stopped. The original sighting happened last month, but it, it's still ongoing and it's still being investigated. I would be so curious to have the chance to interview this family, find out their family history, their bloodlines, get some detailed history, see if there were any precursors to this event. I love doing field investigation work. I have seen a lot of sites with supernatural and paranormal activity and I can say this sighting is phenomenal both for its scope but also for the amount of objects being moved. Now I have a lot of stories about in supernatural encounters between both sides so poltergeist versus uh, a mystic and those are some of my favorite stories but I'm going to save those for another date simply because of time. But this, this supernatural event is phenomenal and I'm calling it supernatural even though it's a crossover with the paranormal because they're using the term poltergeist and um, because they've called in the exorcists. So that's why <laughs> this is being classified under supernatural news. It's, this is span news right here. If you have an event like this, first off, stay safe. Make sure that you're safe. That's everything. Uh, second of all, if you have your cell phone with you, shoot, share, and tell us at Shed Show Talk. Use the hashtag shh, and you can email us this footage, and, and we'll do something on it. 
Our next topic is a bit sad and it involves the gentleman you're seeing on the screen. He was a certified leading paranormal investigator. He was a certified UFO field investigator. He had his own radio show. He was a lead investigator at one point for Ghost Hunters International. He did some work on haunting Australia. He also had over 6,000 investigations under his belt. And unfortunately what happened was he did pass away mysteriously. And something I discussed with Paul, I discussed the fact that there's a lot of things out there that we don't understand. And sometimes people with very little experience will just go out and start summoning things or try to involve things or invite things to interact with because they like the power and they find it really cool. But there are so many stories uh, like this gentleman where something paranormal occurs and in this case it cost him his life. So there is a bit of a sober warning here. Yes, we're interested in stories of the supernatural, paranormal, aliens, anything anomalous, but there's also a, a physical, spiritual type reality to things where there's a lot of unknown. And I feel that we need to show respect and show respect for the things that we don't know. And sometimes that means by asking questions before we jump into something. But one of the things that this gentleman said before he died, and I'll put his name up on the screen, as I mentioned earlier, um, I don't want to mispronounce his name. But this was a very accomplished man in his 30s. He uh, founded the India Paranormal Society. He was being trained as a pilot. Of course, he had over 6,000 investigations under his belt. But he had mentioned to his wife a month before his death that there was a negative force that was pulling him. And he said he was trying to control it but seemed unable to do so. And his wife ignored it, thinking he was simply depressed due to overworking and simply didn't want to talk about depression. And you know what? It's actually stories like this that have helped me come to a wise decision, I believe, to balance the type of stories I'm willing to report on. And may this gentleman rest in complete peace. Uh, one of the temptations on YouTube, especially right now because YouTube is challenging so many different channels and reducing, it appears that people are losing massive amounts of clicks on regular reporting shows and stuff. So there's a bit of a, a challenge right now where people are saying, well, what kind of stories do I want to tell? And there's a temptation to say, well, tell stories that people are going to click on. And sure, that sounds reasonable in a business sense, but it doesn't always make sense paranormally or supernaturally because there's certain consequences with price tags that maybe some of us aren't willing to spend on. And so one of the things we decided to do with our show is keep reporting on content that we believe in, uh, that leads us towards a lighter outcome, um, that leads us towards asking curious questions and having wonder about life and the universe and all of that. Uh, but also topics that aren't going to put us down a road that leads to isolation, lack of funds, or anything that puts us in harm's way. So we did start the Patreon account because of that. Feel free to check it out, but you don't have to. Uh, one of the things we really want to do with this show is whether we get paid or not, and hopefully we do because we really need new computers to keep doing the videos, but if that doesn't happen, myself, Beth, and Paul, we believe that we simply want to make videos that we enjoy creating. Thank you for listening to that. Let's segue to the next topic, which is spiritual and supernatural wars. And this is a topic that absolutely fascinates me because I believe that humanity is on the cusp of such massive changes, whether it's AI or supernatural or paranormal. There's just so much going on. You can look at any newspaper and see that. But there are people who fundamentally encounter spirit beings and there are wars happening. And this absolutely fascinates me. Remember how I said that uh, sometimes poltergeists and mystics battle? And mystics almost always win. Um, sometimes they learn from a few bruises. But these stories actually involve people like wh who you're seeing on the screen right now. And in the middle, middle left, you're seeing Dave Hogan. And on the middle right, you're seeing Heidi Baker. Now, these two are considered spiritual juggernauts, huge in the spirit war community. And I use these terms because I lack the language to really explain to them or explain them to you very easily. But these people encounter through spiritual mechanisms a range of beings in alternate dimensions as part of their daily living. And they have stories that would blow your mind. Um, 
Currently, Dave Hogan and his family live in Mexico amongst the drug cartel areas, and they've had multiple run-ins with them and others. And Heidi Baker, the lady sitting center right, lives in Africa, in East Africa, and she has regular encounters with witch doctors and others. So the battle between dark and light are very real in their world. It's practical, it's physical, it's measurable, and it's daily living for them. They use language that's very spiritually driven. And he's going to describe an encounter he had and his people had after three days of prayer and fasting, uh, wherein they encountered what they believe to be the Shekinah presence of God. And I'll, I'll put some information on the screen to somewhat explain what that is. But you've got to hear the description. If you've never heard a story like this, um, you got to hear it to believe it. So I'm going to play a little bit here and I might stop now and again just to comment on what we're hearing. There was like 600 of my national pastors together and then probably 40 of us. I'm on my way back out to the meeting at 7 in the morning and they had been praying all night. They hadn't slept in three days. And they've been praying all night long, all night long, praying, praying wow. all these people. And uh, when I got there, there were people stuck to the ground, the actual dirt, and couldn't get up all over the place. And, I'm, and it's unusual for us. It was the first time that the manifested, I mean, the Shekinah glory came. Mm. Our first time. And I'm sitting there with the, my, my local leadership. And I'm, and I, what is going on? They don't know. Mm -hmm. Everybody's blasted by the spirit yeah so what he means there by blasted by the spirit and i've interviewed a lot of different mystics blasted means that they encounter ruach and i'll put the spelling on that it's the hebrew name for the spirit of god r-u-a-h and that people who have an encounter with this spirit claim it overtakes their physical faculties and heidi who's sitting on the right was once laid laid uh, laid out i don't know how else to say it for seven days unable to physically move as a result of this encounter. And Dave Hogan on the left had an experience that was so powerful it involved an audible voice and, and an interaction that occurred on an airplane. And he said when he got off the airplane, it, lit, it was on fire. So that is not an uncommon story for people of this nature and caliber. And so when he's talking about being laid waste or laid out or having these encounters, visualize an, a non-physical entity, energy, spirit source that is so powerful it can knock people on the ground and hold them there. Um, but there's a beautiful side to the story. Have a listen. And right, just for no reason, we don't know about, a uh, Shekinah so cloud. Come on. Like 10 people saw it. Mm. But 10 folks saw this cloud come from above. It was turning out of itself. It hit us. And it blew everybody, and it went three. You know, you know this reference. It went three villages deep all, in oh. 360. Wow. Unbelievers, everybody, are out on the ground shaking and blah blah. blah. They uh, can't even the witch doctors go down, right? Everybody. Oh. And then that, that went for I don't know. It went that was about approximately 7:45 in the morning, more or less. And it went when I woke back up. Uh, that was the last one to go down. So I, I didn't understand what was going on exactly. I wasn't used to the Shekinah presence. There's a difference. Yeah, there is. And, and so, uh, I mean, we're raising the dead. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're seeing all these miracles. We're seeing arms and legs grow out. We're seeing leprosy healed and, and the results of leprosy reversed and let limbs grow out. Uh, that's different than the Shekinah presence. So what you've just heard here is just a snippet from this interview. And the interview is done by a group called Iris After Hours, and they interview various spiritual ministers from around the world. And the interviews will really knock your socks off. What he's describing here is that when this cloud presence came, which was witnessed by 10 plus people, it knocked out all the people within three villages. In other words, and I've heard a lot of stories uh, throughout history when these type of events occur, that sometimes it's almost like something you'd hear Moses interact with a column of fire or cloud at night. But there's there's this anomaly that enters the sky and they believe it holds the very presence of God. 
and it literally knocks people on their butts on the ground flat out. Some people can't move their arms, their legs or anything, but it just completely overwhelms. Now imagine if you were in the next village and you didn't know what was going on and suddenly everybody around you is hit by a presence that knocks you on the ground. Uh, and, and they describe that when this happens, uh, people have incredible experiences, emotional breakthrough, physical breakthrough, healings, raising of the dead. And there's all this phenomena that goes associated with these very extremely rare events. So this is an interview that really knocked my socks off and I'm going to listen to it a few times. I've sent it to a few of our Shed Show talkers and we're going to generate some discussion about it. But what you just heard is an extremely rare experience with this Shekinah encounter and I'll I'll put some information on the screen and I have done so already so that it makes it a little bit easier to understand for people who've never even heard of this before. But do your own digging. I mean, there's a massive spectrum of uh, counterfeit and authentic out there. So you might have to wade through a lot of information, but this is a gem. What you're looking at right now are people that have been tried and tested from police to cartels to governments to extremists. Um, they've uh, uh, the gentleman center left has been stoned three times. He's been shot um, and he keeps coming back. The lady center right has had um, weapons held to her throat. She's been threatened by murder numerous times. And yet both of those individuals and their children who are sitting beside them uh, have developed huge charities for orphans and other people. So clearly in spiritual wars, these people are representing something they firmly believe in to the point where they've put their life physically on the line numerous times. And so it definitely invites further investigation. Do you have any supernatural, paranormal, alien or anomalous stories that you wanna talk about? Let us know at Shed Show Talk. My name is Beth and I'll see you next time.